Hello everybody, this is Dr. Carmen Bryant. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Thank you guys for coming on Friday uh, with uh, Helen Sadler, Destiny Helper, and tuning in. And then those of you that were able to come to a closed support group on Saturday uh, when I spoke, I appreciate you guys for being there. Thank you guys so, so much. I'm not going to make this long because I do have clients. But remember, I was doing a series on the narcissistic dysfunctional family. And so I was discussion, discussion, discussing the roles of within this dysfunctional family. Now, it derived from the, the uh, description of the alcoholic family. So that's where it derived from. But it plays a major role in narcissistic families because you do have one that has a problem, which is the narcissist. And everything revolves around this narcissist. And so you have that enabling spouse or a partner that makes sure that everyone plays their roles and that, that enabler is so codependent and so uh, into making sure that the needs of the narcissist is met while that narcissist just sucks everybody dry. And so we've talked about the um, golden child and what people think with the golden child is that the golden child is just a perfect kid that gets all the favors. Some people do not know that covertly, a lot of times golden children are also sexually molested, you know, because they're uh, looked at as the favorite and extension of uh, this narcissist. And so a lot of you are finding out that through the roles that people play within their families, not all of them have been sexually or physically abused, but each one of them played a role. And children are traumatized when they see other family members or siblings or, or even a parent being traumatized or abused. So children are traumatized, you know, uh, by seeing this happening. And that's why they are so adamant about trying to play the role or even competing within the family. Triangulation occurs in a narcissistic family because that's what the narcissist does. And so we've talked about the golden child. We've talked about the scapegoat. We talked about the lost child. Uh, and just recently I've talked about the mascot, the mascot, you know, the comedian that tries to, you know, make light of the situation, make, make things fun. You know, why can't we just all get along? You know, cracking jokes and you know a lot of times the jokes you know just like most comedians uh know that a lot of times those jokes are um you know hit on themselves their true uh look into how they feel about their own selves and so um today i wanted to talk about the hero the um surrogate parent so and remember a lot of you are asking the question is it possible to rotate between positions yes because the narcissist assigns those uh, positions within the family the golden child can get fired and become a scapegoat you know it can it, you know it, it, he or she can be fired and become the scapegoat can become the lost child can become the mascot can become the you know uh, uh, the, uh, the the hero the surrogate parent so each one of those roles can be rotated depending on you know a lost child that is hidden in the room uh, and that was the last thing you know is a quick recap you know that that lost child, you know, in their own imaginary world, lost, uh, usually cannot find themselves, you know, uh, you know, usually have a low self-esteem. They don't know who they are. They don't know how to relate to the world because, you know, within a family, that's how you begin to relate to the world. They don't know how to relate to the world. They usually have problems with social interaction or, you know, and, and usually are hidden, try to stay small and hidden because of what's going on within the family. And they're literally lost. You know, no one really pays attention to them. You know, a lot of times, you know, they get hand-me-downs or forget to feed them, forget to take care of them, forget to buy their school supplies. Sometimes, you know, they're uh, uh, unkempt, you know, poor hygiene because they're just a lost kid. They're the ones that cause no problem. They serve no role in the family and they serve no purpose to the narcissist. The narcissist can't get any fuel from them. And so they're irrelevant, but let that, that, let that lost child begin to excel in school and become, uh, you know, known and people know this, is, you know, an exceeder in, in sports or anything, you know, the narcissist can change that child's position and fire the golden child and that lost child becomes a golden child. So imagine how confusing it is for children and then growing up as an adult being confused confused about who you are. Your whole world and your foundation stem from being in a home with a narcissist that was dysfunctional at how they did what they did. Now, the hero or the surrogate child is the one that serves as the, sur the surrogate child, the surrogate parent. They serve as the surrogate parent within the family. Not only is that child put in a position where they have to parent the parents because the parents are immature, but they have to parent the children. And so a lot of times the hero or the surrogate, um, we'll call them the hero, the surrogate the parent-child 
takes upon a lot of responsibility that they're not prepared to to uh, take upon. They're uh, oftentimes they're very parentified and they're looked at as a peer to the parents or the narcissist. They're peered at the same level. So imagine having a conversation with a child that's very young. They don't understand. They don't have life experience. So they don't understand. They're trying to do the best that they can to cater to the emotional needs, the physical needs, and often, you know, the nutritional needs of the children, making sure that they get to school, they do their homework, you know. So they're exhausted because they're taking upon a lot of responsibility that they're not supposed to. And then the parents, you know, the narcissistic parents and the enabler holds that child responsible for the behaviors of the siblings. And they'll get in trouble if they say, but these are your kids. Or when they do their best to try to discipline, they become bossy or they become very rigid, you know, disciplinarians, you know, and they try to be rigid to try to, you know, the children don't really respect a peer, which is their child, a child, a sibling as, you know, being a parent or having that type of authority. And so when they try to enforce that authority, authority over these kids to try to keep a balance and try to keep them from getting in trouble, a lot of times the parents will sabotage that or the narcissist will sabotage that and everything just falls apart. But then they hold that that child responsible for getting everybody back in order. And that is draining, you know, because they've lost a sense of who they are as it is. You know, a lot of them grow up and they become very um, uh, strict uh, disciplinarian or uh overachievers, um, you know, but, but, but oftentimes they're, they're lost. They, they're, they're lost. Let's see. Um, I was reading somewhere where it say here. I'm just going to give you a piece of it. Um, and where is this at? Um, this is on narcissist families. I think it is narcissistic families. Um, so what it, what it did say is that a lot of times they do have to suppress their emotions. They have to suppress their feelings. They have to, you know, their needs are not being catered to. Their needs at their age and at the level that they are, their needs are not being catered to. Their emotional needs are not being catered to, but they are the ones that, you know, for example, they provide the love to the siblings. They want to make sure that their siblings get hugs, you know, to make sure that the siblings are doing okay. You know, uh, they, they're very protective. You know, if they were ever placed in foster care, they're the ones that try to herd the children together and make sure the children are connected or adopted together. Or if they're of age where they can be either emancipated or, or old enough, they'll take upon that responsibility of taking the children in the house and raising those children, those siblings as their own. So, you know, that the family stays together. So do you see the pressure for that surrogate parent child or that hero child? They're the ones that make the family look good. So when people, you know, on the outside, they make the family look good. So then, you know, they maintain that, you know, they are enablers and codependents in training. They are, you know, and there could be a time where if something happened to the enabler and, and say the narcissist is stuck with the uh, children, you know, has the children, then that surrogate child, that surrogate parent child, that hero child becomes the equivalent of one of the parents, even to a point where that narcissist will talk to them as if they are the other parent. They are an adult, meaning that now they'll place upon them adult responsibility, even in the bedroom. Even having conversations, children cannot have conversations at the level of an adult. They don't have the experience. These kids are traumatized. But now you can see how there's a possibility that these children, you know, in the different roles within that family can develop narcissistic personality disorder. It becomes a defense mechanism that's gone wrong. They go within and they can't come without, especially if, you're, if your emotional needs are not catered to. They shut down and close off and then they're not able to open up because if I show any emotions, number one, my emotions, my needs don't get met in Anyway, so it's pointless for me to express my emotion, emotions or even express my needs. You know, if I cry, it's really, I never get validated. I never get comforted. So what is the purpose of me crying if no one is going to comfort me? So a lot of times, you know, even with the helpers or different people within, you know, different roles within the family, a lot of times it seems like they're emotionless because they don't know, you know, what is the point of crying? I got to be strong. I have to be strong for my siblings. My siblings cannot see me cry because if they see me cry, it's weakness. Or if my siblings see me cry, everything will fall apart. And they can maintain the structure, you know, of the family. They can maintain, you know, some type of balance with the siblings, but they will not express emotions. They will not cry because to them it's a weakness. And if the uh, younger children see the older child, you know, sometimes it is the older child that becomes the mascot or the um, uh, surrogate parent. You know, if they see them crying, their mind, they have registered. If they see me cry or break down or weak, then they'll look at me as weak and then they'll be afraid. So I always have to maintain strength. And so everyone sees them as being the strong, powerful person 
person, you know, they're so strong and they did this and that. And, you know, but they don't know that on the inside of that hero, on the inside, they're broken, they're torn up, you know, they, they're desperate to be loved. All they want is someone to love them the way that they were able to love, you know, their siblings and protect their, that's all they want in return. That's really what they want. And they do it for the siblings because of the fact that that's so desperately what they want. But usually they're pretty emotionally jacked up too, you know, and they usually do have problems in relationships because that's all they want. They become desperate for love and affection and security. You know, most people don't understand them. So hopefully this has helped you give you some more information. And we were talking about the hero this time or the surrogate parent child or the codependent enabler in training nine times out of ten they usually leave the family and get right back into the same family family dynamic that they left they get right back into the same relationship um, that they left out of their own families and they'll repeat the cycle and you'll see the whole cycle within that family repeating itself as of what they left because they recreated in their own homes so hopefully this is hopefully this has helped you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Dr. Carmen Bryant and my channel is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit all so you can see whenever I come on live, which is usually on Sundays. And the time kind of fluctuates sometimes right now. Uh, but in the beginning, because we were at home, it was usually earlier about two. Normally on normal days, you know, when before the row row came, you know, I would come on between eight and nine. Now I'm able to come in usually between uh, four and eight o'clock. So you guys just stay tuned to make sure you get the alerts. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I do have a book. Go check it out. It's Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. You can find it on Barnes & Noble or Amazon. Those that are out of the country, you can go to Westbo Press and order it from there. They will send out of country. Yes, it is on ebook and it is on Kindle. If you guys like reading it on your devices, thank you so much for your support. Make sure that if you need counseling, I do have a link. It's betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. It is not me. It is a dis Discounted is a sponsored link. So right now I'm not offering um, counseling on BetterHelp because BetterHelp is within uh, the nation in each one of your states. Those are licensed counselors within your state and you'll get a 10% discount. I think it's 10% discount by clicking on that link using my link. And then if you have monetary problems, you know, it's a nominal fee already, but they will assist you with grants to make sure you get connected with a counselor. When you're looking for a counselor, look for someone that specializes in trauma, post-traumatic stress, domestic violence, um, you know, complex post-traumatic stress. That's what you're looking for. But they do have articles on the site, sites that actually discusses um, narcissist abuse. And a lot of people that have gotten counselors said it really did them well. So some of you need counseling and not coaching. Coaching, on the other hand, I will assist you with coaching you and maneuvering you through your obstacle or what it is that you're going through at that particular time. I cannot provide counseling outside the state of Washington. I can provide coaching. If you're inside the state of Washington, you are welcome to contact me and I can make an appointment with you at this particular time because my books are filled so fast. I am not accepting um, couples counseling. And as some of you are wanting couples counseling and you want couples counseling because you want me to change the narcissist, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. Uh, they're not going to change. And some of you use the counselors to get the, the narcissist in because you want the counselor tell the narcissist that they're a narcissist or you want that counselor to confront the narcissist so that the narcissist will change that doesn't help that doesn't work and and hopefully no counselor is doing that because i don't do that so i appreciate your thoughts but that does not work you know that does not work narcissists do not change that is a permanent personality disorder also make sure you check out my um mentors youtube channel it is helen sadler destiny helper and she will provide you with information about narcissist abuse from a spiritual and biblical perspective so that you guys can get and even if you're not a believer in christ that is no problem she will still provide you with spiritual information and how to apply it to your belief system both of us do the do it and she does it from the biblical and spiritual perspective and so that is good information for a lot of you that are asking spiritual questions you know um go and channel your question over there to her and she will provide you with answers years and years and years and years of experiences she's my mentor and my senior pastor and so i appreciate you guys thank you so much for tuning in i'm also on facebook psychological health consultants and services and overcoming narcissist abuse both on instagram and on facebook thank you guys and you guys go be great